Around 40 years ago, it was nothing but a small fishing village, isolated, nestling in the middle of an area inhabited by poor farmers. Now, though, it is a massive city of approaching 15 million inhabitants, a city embodying the Chinese economic miracle, packed with startups, new technology, innovation, and design. It is the epitome of the phrase made in China. Just why, though, has Shenzhen changed so fast? Well, its fortunes were turned on its head at the end of the 1970s, when it was chosen as the country's first special economic zone. It was to be at the heart of China's experiment to open up to market capitalism and foreign investment. Ever since, it has swelled and expanded to become the largest manufacturing base in the world. Shenzhen. Shenzhen has become a modern city with a prosperous economy, good infrastructure, and a serious legal system. It demonstrates the benefits and vitality of a Chinese style socialism. Warning bells, though, are ringing. Back in 2010, the UN saying that as the world's largest mega city, the unstoppable urbanization of the expanded Shenzhen Guangzhou region could become a mega region stretching hundreds of kilometers, an endless city of potentially over 120 million people. Shenzhen itself, then, has become the first city in the country in terms of GDP. Foreign capital flows in as new factories and businesses spring up every week. The average age of people living there, just 28. But just who are these young entrepreneurs? And why did Communist China choose Shenzhen as the heart of its economic powerhouse? Well, Antoine Vedei, Thomas Blanc and Charlie Wang revisit Shenzhen for France 24. Seen from the sky, it looks like any other Chinese metropolis. Skyscrapers all around, a new central business district. But think again. In China, Shenzhen is a city with a difference. Through here blows the wind of modernity, youth, new technologies. Shenzhen is the face of contemporary and uninhibited China. An old fishing port which became, in 40 years, China's Silicon Valley. Alexa Chen witnessed the city being constructed before her eyes. She's from Shuko District, one of the oldest in Shenzhen. The tallest, it's me. This is where she was born. 56 years ago. Look, that's what Shenzhen looked like originally. At that time, the streets were just swamps. They were not even tarred. There were only old houses on one level. Now there are big buildings, towers. But 40 years ago, Shenzhen was just a small fishing village with very few inhabitants. There's nothing left of the city that Alexa Chen remembers. Today, the old fishing port has been transformed. Her neighborhood has become a kind of Chinese Riviera, the lair of expatriates and the new middle class. I am very excited and proud to see that Shenzhen has experienced such development. And it happened thanks to the reforms and the policy of opening up led by the Chinese government. As a resident of Shenzhen, I'm really proud of what's happened here. The city began its transformation 40 years ago, after Shenzhen became the first special economic zone of the country. The first exports, first investments from abroad. This is where the Chinese economy opened up to the world. The man behind this economic liberalization was Deng Xiaoping. The face of the father of China's reform and opening up is still displayed in grand style 20 years after his death. I arrived in Shenzhen in the 90s, and here there were only swamps. The road here was almost impossible to walk on. And in 40 years, Shenzhen has grown beautifully. Without him, there would not have been such advances. It's thanks to him. When people from other provinces come to Shenzhen, they take pictures here to honor him. We do this because he's a hero who's transformed Shenzhen. Shenzhen, the laboratory of reforms, 
is today the showcase of the Chinese economic miracle. Last year, its growth reached 8.8%, its GDP 280 billion euros. That's more than Hong Kong and Singapore, the richest cities in Asia. Shenzhen wants to be the world's innovation capital. And for that, the city has built a gigantic museum with futuristic architecture. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Shenzhen Museum of Industry. The visit begins, of course, with a tribute to the architect of the reforms. On this face, we have assembled 30,000 bolts and nuts that are basic elements of the industry to create the face of the first designer of reforms and opening, Mr. Deng Xiaoping. On seven floors, the museum lists local innovations. In the automotive sector, the medical field, green energies and new technologies. Here we have a Huawei tablet, an Apple mobile phone and a Lenovo computer. Apple's phone is assembled at Foxconn. It's a Shenzhen company. And Lenovo and Huawei are both companies that have been born in Shenzhen. In fact, for their research and development or for their production, everything is made here. Driven by its entrepreneurs and innovations, the city has earned the nickname the Chinese Silicon Valley. Hundreds of companies are based in this brand new neighborhood. Creators, engineers, inventors, the heart of Chinese tech. Welcome to UB Tech. Here is the research team working on our robots. And here is our connected robot cruiser. UB Tech sells the most human like robots in the world for the general public. The company posted a record-breaking fundraiser. It's now valued at $5 billion. In the field of artificial intelligence, no one is doing better. The company's manager says its swift growth is due to it being located in Shenzhen. Here we have a complete chain of production for electronics, whether it's design, research and development, or manufacturing. Here it's perhaps also the best place to develop software. All stages of production are happening here. Every day, UB Tech factories release hundreds of robots. This one, called Alpha, is for children. He can dance and even teaches sports lessons. But the latest creation of these engineers is this robot, Walker. This is Walker, the new walking robot that we invented. Walker is a perfect butler. He monitors your house, writes your emails, and can detect your emotions. And that's not all. He's able to hit a ball. A robot, 100% made in Shenzhen. All the components inside, the electrical system and the control parts are made in Shenzhen. And we are the ones who invented the electronic circuit, the software that is inside and operates the different functions of the robot. Ubitech now has one goal, to sell robots around the world. Conquering the planet from Shenzhen is something other tech giants have already done. ZTE, Lenovo, Tencent, DJI or Huawei. All of these companies were born here. Huawei is one of the most innovative companies in the world. Just last year, the telecommunications company filed 4,024 patents internationally, a record for any company in the world. In Shenzhen, 
one of these tech juggernauts opened its doors to us. We are welcomed at DJI. The drone manufacturer has become a symbol for the dazzling success of young entrepreneurs in Shenzhen. Today, 70% of civil drones in the world belong to DJI's brand. Oh, this is the Phantom 4 Pro. So Phantom 4 is really the, um, an iconic uh, aircraft from DJI because it has now evolved to the fourth generation. But it has retained a lot of the, the color, the shape, so it's really recognizable when people are flying this in the air. Since its creation in 2006, the startup has filed more than 6,000 patents worldwide. One of the latest inventions, this miniature drone takes commands through hand gestures. I will right now bring it away. Just use my hand. No need for remote control. And if I want to land it, DJI is one of the most bankable companies today. At its head is Frank Wang. Just 37 years old, he's one of the 100 richest men in China. His empire is valued at $10 billion. He's opened offices in the United States, Japan and Germany and employs 12,000 employees. Their average age is 27. Success made possible thanks to the ecosystem of Shenzhen, where talent from all around the world now converges. We have a very uh, strong ecosystem ourselves. So it really makes uh, us quite nimble, uh, flexible, and really giving us the advantage to uh, bring ideas to life much more quickly. And you know, here in Shenzhen, it's also becoming an uh, international talent hub, not just an innovation hub, but talent hub. People from all over the world are, are you know, looking at you know, what's happening here in Shenzhen. Among Shenzhen's 15 million inhabitants are today more than 1 million foreign residents. Many of them are young entrepreneurs who have bet on China to launch their startup, including this French expat. Here we are in the heart of the tech. We arrive at the Cool Hobo workspace, which counts today 12 people, with my two co-founders, Harry and Bentley, and the rest of the team, the designers and developers. Luc Cobb created Cool Hobo three years ago, a startup specializing in virtual reality. And here is the first application he has developed. The idea was to take the user to virtual places with a navigation that is done by instantaneous recognition of hands that are able to catch virtual objects. In terms of skills, we need people who come from video games, 3D modeling. Shenzhen, particularly because of these tech giants, has an ecosystem, has a pool of talent that is large enough. Today, his startup pushes innovation even further. After raising $500,000, his team is now working on a new augmented reality tool. He believes the future of technology is in China, and Shenzhen may soon exceed Silicon Valley. The United States is on the decline, and Silicon Valley has become too expensive, too closed on itself. When you think of Silicon Valley as a melting pot, as a place of innovation made by a mix of cultures, different influences, this can now be found in Shenzhen. It's a new city that doesn't really have a past. It attracts Chinese people, but also people from around the world. And that's how we find the spirit of innovation, this breath of creativity. In total, Shenzhen today has nearly 8,000 startups engaged in new technologies. The sector is growing fast, expanding by 20% last year. But this growth doesn't benefit everyone. Those who haven't embraced new technologies are becoming increasingly concerned. The former leading manufacturing industry behind Shenzhen's growth is now almost at a standstill. Dongguan. This city on the outskirts of Shenzhen had for 40 years been nicknamed the factory of the world. 
Here's our factory with our workshop, where we carry out part of our production. Chung Sun Hai's company manufactures cheap handbags for Japan, the United States, and Europe. At the height of his activity, he employed 500 workers. Today, there are only 100. This is because demand has slowed and wages and production costs have increased. As a result, the factories are leaving Dongguan and one by one heading to Indonesia or Vietnam. Here, the costs of production are too high, and it's becoming more difficult for us to employ workers. There may be no choice but to move our business elsewhere. He's also thinking of leaving. Chung Sun Hai says in Shenzhen, there is simply no more space for small companies like his. Every country experiences peaks and lows. Taiwan and Japan, for example, in the past were highly industrialized countries. And then they had no choice but to take the turn of high tech. This is a logical evolution that all countries face one day or another. China's role as the factory of the world is over. With Shenzhen, the country wants to complete its transformation, modernize its industry, move its economy to focus on new technologies. In Shenzhen, the next industrial revolution is already in motion. Antoine Vedi, Tom Blanc and Charlie Wang reporting from Shenzhen for France 24. That's all from this week's edition. Don't forget, of course, you can catch it and all the previous editions as well on our website. That's at france24.com. More news coming up. Thanks for watching.